In this video, I'm going to show you how to start rendering your projects with Omniverse Create. We've covered NVIDIA Omniverse before when we showed you how to do facial animations with audio to face. Recently, NVIDIA sent us this brand new RTX A4500 graphics card, and while Chris and Nico were getting that installed, I wanted to come up with a good project to test it out. I decided to see what would happen if I switched one of our current projects over to NVIDIA's new rendering software, and I was so impressed that I had to share it with you guys. Not only will I show you how easy it is to switch over from your current rendering software to Omniverse Create, but I want to show you why you might want to switch over. Omniverse is fast, it's powerful, it's beginner friendly, it's free, and most importantly it gave me some great results. If you want to try it for yourself, follow the link in the description and download Omniverse, and then install Create. It's completely free. Once Omniverse Create is installed, you'll need a model and some textures to render. If you don't already have one, head over to Render Crate and download something to practice with. Okay, first a quick tour of the interface. The big window here is the viewport. Like any other rendering software, this is where you'll see all of your models and stuff. Over on the top right is the Stage tab. This lists everything in your scene just like the outliner would in Maya or other 3D programs. And below that we have the Properties window. This is where you can change settings for whatever you have selected. And then at the bottom on the left we have a bunch of tabs. Content is where you go to import files from your computer. NVIDIA Assets is where you can import a bunch of rad pre-made assets from NVIDIA like these trees. And then there's also this Materials tab with a a bunch of pre-made materials if you want to quickly and easily develop a look for a scene or a concept. There's a lot more to dig into but this should get us started. So hop back over to that content tab and navigate to the model you want to import. You can import anything like an OBJ or an FBX. Lately Nvidia has really been pushing hard on a new format called USD and we're going to be exploring USDs in the future here on the channel and on RenderCrate Store. So subscribe if you want to learn more about that in the future. And in the meantime check out this article on Nvidia's website. For this project I'm going to import this Alembic cache. I picked this guy to tease a fun project that we're working on but also I really want to stress out Omniverse and see what it can do. This creature has 15 texture sets and they're all 8K. That's 75 ultra high res textures. So let's see if Omniverse can handle this massive file. First, let's apply a new material. So right click on your model and go to create materials and pick whichever one works for whatever you're doing. Quick overview though, Omni PBR should be familiar if you've already worked with real-time rendering engines before. And Omni Surface is similar, but it has a few extra options if you need them, such as subsurface scattering. For this test, I'm going to keep it simple and just choose Omni PBR. Notice that your new material appears in the Stage tab under Looks. I'll rename mine to Kaiju Material. It's really easy to apply this material to other objects. You just drag and drop it onto whatever object you want. I'll apply it to his claws and his little toe beans. Okay, time to plug in the textures, so pop back over to the Content tab and navigate to your Textures folder. Then select the material and drag the textures into the appropriate channel. I'm going to drag my Color Texture into the Albedo Map channel, and then my Roughness Texture into the Roughness Map channel. Same for Metalness, Normal, and anything else you might have. Now there are a few things we need to change before it'll look right. The first thing is we need to get Omniverse to recognize UDIMs. Just go to where you plugged in your texture and replace the UDIM number in the file path here with the UDIM token like this. Now it'll recognize all of the textures. Go ahead and do that for all the channels if your project calls for it. Next, we need to set the appropriate color space for each texture. These settings might be different for you, but typically your albedo map will be set to sRGB, while your roughness, metallic, and normal should be set to raw. And you might also have to play around with flipping the green channel or the V tangent in your normal map if it doesn't look right. Looking pretty good, but one last step for our test, lighting. There's already a default light in the scene, and if that's all you need, then feel free to click on it, rotate it, change the color, intensity, exposure, angle, and so on. There's tons of options. But if you want a sky dome with an HDR or any other light, here's how you can do that. I'm going to hide the default light, and then go up to Create, Light. And here's a list of all the options. For this test, I'll do a dome light. In the properties of the dome light, you can plug in an HDR into the file texture. So, it pretty much does what you expect, right? But here's something even cooler that Omniverse can do. Hide your dome light, and then go to the Environments tab down here. These are pre-made HDR environments, but notice how some of them have this little play button in the corner. Those are called dynamic skies. Double click one to add it to your scene. This is still an HDR, but it's not just a static image. You can customize it. Look at these options here to the right. So you can add a ground plane, and then you can add materials to the ground plane, like grass or concrete, to bounce some light from below. This time of day slider allows you to change the position of the sun in the sky. You can even change the latitude and longitude so that the light perfectly matches a specific city you want to recreate. Check it out. They even have presets for people who don't have their latitude and longitude memorized. I went to Amsterdam one time, and it was pretty rad, so I'll choose that one. Okay, let's twiddle some render knobs to make this look as good as possible. First, let's boost the quality by changing the rendering method. Here in the top of the viewport, you can see we've been using RTX Real-Time. This is a quicker rendering method, which looks pretty decent. 
but not quite enough for a final render. I'll switch over to RTX Interactive using path tracing. Now it has much more realistic shadows. The next level up from that is RTX Accurate using iRay. This is a slower but much more realistic rendering method. You can see it's actually taking a few minutes to rebuild my shader. And because my current workstation has an RTX 2080 Ti, it'll take a while to warm up and start rendering. But I'm really excited to see how the new RTX A4500 that Nvidia sent to us performs with this mode. Okay, and that should get you started with Omniverse Create. Be sure to explore all the other apps they have available in the suite. There are tons of ridiculously useful tools in there which we plan to integrate into our pipeline here at Production Crate. If you've already created something cool with Omniverse, share it with us on Instagram or on the Discord. And if you've discovered a useful tool in Omniverse that you think we need to see, leave a comment below. And subscribe to the channel so you can see part two where we test out the new Beast video card that Nvidia sent us. Alright, later creators!